Hi, this is Rick Allen with Def Leppard, and you're listening to Rock at Night. This is Sharice with Rock at Night, and today we are here speaking with legendary drummer Rick Allen of Def Leppard, but many of you may not know he has a lot of other accomplishments. He is an artist. He is also uh, the, the founder of Project Resiliency, which helps wounded warriors and those that have suffered from PTSD. He's involved with the Raven Drum Foundation. And I also understand you have an organization called Big Love, which helps do benefit concerts for those in the entertainment industry. And last but not least, your artwork, <laughs> which is showing at Wentworth Galleries throughout the country. Coming up in July, you, you will be in person in Atlantic City and King of Prussia Mall which would be July 10th and July 11th. Let's talk about Big Love Benefits concerts. Well, How did that I, get going? Well, that actually came from uh, a song uh, that my wife wrote uh, on her latest record, which she just released, uh, Under the Wolf Moon. And it was a song called uh, Big Love. And... Um, you know, when we saw the ripple effect that went out into our industry and how devastating it was um, way back in, in March of last year, um, we felt as though we needed to get involved. And, and she came up with this great idea of uh, a virtual concert. And um, we ended up calling it Big Love Benefit Concerts. And uh, all the money that we raised, uh, we gave to uh, Sweet Relief who help um, industry professionals, uh, in particular in the area of mental health, because we were seeing there was a, a huge need for that. So that kept us busy. It kept us really busy uh, for uh, a good part of a uh, good part of the year. So um, yeah, we we we've been busy. It, it was cool because I I you know I got on the phone. The first person I called was Tommy Shaw with Sticks. And he said, sign me up, you know, and then um, Billy Idol, again, same thing. He said, I'm, I'm in, uh, Miles Kennedy, Matt Sorum, um, you know, just, it was, it was so cool, you know, that people came forward with no questions asked. They just wanted to help. Um, and, and really the whole idea was, um, you know, if the, if the infrastructure of our industry disappears, then we, we, we might not have anything to come back to. And taking care of those industry professionals that make it possible to, uh, to put on live concerts, um, it, it was, to us, it was paramount. It was, it was, it was absolutely essential that those people are, are, are helped, you know? Uh, the concert, it was live streamed, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, we did it on Nugs TV, and I think it's gonna it's gonna see the light of day again. Um, we're in negotiations at the moment. Uh, see if we can we can find a new home for it. So, um, as I say, we're busy with that. So, hopefully, in the not too distant future, people will be able to uh, to get a look at the uh, the concert. I saw that there's some uh, type of big love benefit concert in August in California, I believe. I believe so. Yeah, she's been really busy. I mean, you know, I um, I just kind of go where, you know, where she wants me to go um, for good reason. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, if she if she's putting this stuff together, then obviously I'm going to be there and I'm, I'm going to help her out and, and, and play drums as best I can, you know. 
Uh, yeah, the year 2020 and COVID truly affected the music industry. And what a lot of people don't realize, it's not just musicians. There's a lot of support people, every, everybody, venues, security people. I even uh, understand printers because they print brochures. A whole industry has been affected. And Yeah, and uh, you imagine, you know, the infrastructure around venues, you know, restaurants, bars. <laughs> Um, the, 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 the devastation uh, was, was really, really, um, I, I've never experienced anything like it, you know? Um, so that's really been our focus is, is, is you know, giving back to our industry, um, you know, as, as well as helping, helping our wounded warriors, which is, it's a, a, that's another story, you know? Um, isolation for, for some people, is really really a, a bad thing so you know we've been we've been helping out where we can that's uh interesting that you brought up isolation because i mean in 2020 we were forced to be isolated and um people had to have food brought in if they were able to afford to bring food in people obviously weren't working or had to live with family members it was truly unprecedented as far as the pressure and this crossed all demographics. It really, it really did. Um, and, you know, more recently I did my first in-person art shows um, down in Southern Florida. Uh, I did, um, let's see. Um, Boca, I think Boca, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, did Bo I did Boca Raton, I did uh, um, Fort Lauderdale, and then um, uh, the Hard Rock uh, Hotel, you know, with the big guitar and everything um, out in uh, Hollywood, uh, Florida. And it was cool. You know, you could tell people were really hungry. They wanted to come out and do something. And uh, we made it something really special. You know, it was, it was great to see people come out. A lot of familiar faces, but also people that I hadn't seen before. So uh, I, had, I had a really good time. It was fun. I, you were involved with a lot of altruistic endeavors and I consider you to be basically an ambassador for resiliency, having been through that yourself. And I was wondering, I noticed you started doing a lot of this in 2001 or so, was it 9-11 that prompted this or were you doing a lot of altruistic endeavors let's say with people with PTSD in the 90s what was kind of the catalyst um I, w I was meeting up with people during the 90s but I don't it wasn't until I met met up with my wife in 2000 mm -hmm. but uh, uh she was already she was already involved in the healing arts you know she was teaching at Boulder College of Massage at the time uh she was writing their energy medicine program and um a friend of mine introduced me to her and, um, you know, cause I'm always having issues with pain, this and the other. So um, I met with her uh, in Colorado Springs and um, at, a, at a show that Def Lab were playing. And we just kept in touch, you know, after, after I had my session with her, uh, we kept in touch. And then I think about six months later, the two of us, you know, we, we got together, but it was really, uh, two, two, two experiences coming together, you know, my experience of extreme trauma and then her experience of, uh, of you know, the healing arts and, and, and bringing those two things together. It, it was fantastic to bring our experience. And then shortly after that, like around 2002, we started Raven Drum Foundation, which was working with all different parts of the population. And then I think around 2006, I went to Walter Reed Medical Center in uh, the DC area. And um, I saw how much suffering there was. And that's when we started um, Project Resiliency, which was primarily focused on, you know, um, everything to do with, with our, our wounded warriors. And it was a great fit because, you know, I, I suffer from PTSD myself. So I saw the similarities in, in terms of triggers and behaviors. And so it was a good fit. 
and we continue to do that to this day. I noticed on your website you have, it uh, looks like a, a podcast or some type of radio show that you do. We, we used to. We, 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 uh, we haven't done the radio show in, in, in many years, um, but we were one of the first to, to actually start doing, doing you know, a proper podcast. Um, and like I say, that was, that, was, that was many years ago. We'd love to do it again. Um, but, you know, we, we um, I guess we have so many things on the go. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to, to do everything. Uh, you know, we only have so much time in a day, you know. But, uh, but we, 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 we do what we can. You know, wherever we see a need, we, we either partner with other organizations that are like-minded, that are doing it really well, um, or we get involved ourselves. Mm -hmm. Your website is really a resource for people. I was looking at the videos on, I think it was Steps to Resiliency. And um, of course you mentioned isolation was something that's really important that people be with other people. Yeah. Um, if someone has suffered some type of trauma though, isn't it natural for them to just withdraw? How do you get it to come out? How do you get someone to come out? I don't. Well, we have technology. Um, a lot of the programs that we support are mentorship type programs uh, where you bring people that have had the experience that can maybe work with some of the younger uh, veterans um, and, and, and create new mentors. And that, that's the whole idea is that knock on effect is, you know, uh, pay it forward, that kind of idea, you know. Mm -hmm. uh the Raven Drum Foundation, I guess, do you still hold drum circles for? for yeah, um, I think we've got, we've got one coming up um, in the not too distant future, I think in the, in the sort of uh, San Diego area. Um, but it's been a while, you know, uh, COVID kind of shut everything down. Yeah. Uh, um, any kind of large gatherings. So it was, it was, it was difficult, but now, we're starting to see the horizon open up again, and uh, there's no reason why we, we, we can't embark upon that again. Mm -hmm. uh, drum circles, I've been to them myself. <laughs> and uh, I think it's, what I find interesting about, dr I also drum, drumming is that everybody's all on the same wavelength. They're all in the same rhythm. Well, and that's call, healing, isn't it? We call it dominant frequency. It's uh -huh. like it's okay. like standing uh, looking at an ocean, or standing looking at um, you know the the cosmos, or or standing in you know a forest. Um, there's a dominant frequency that um, you know you become entrained. You 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 know if you're in a crappy place mm -hmm. and you you experience something that is 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 bigger than you, then. Um, it's natural for that to have an effect on the individual. And that's the whole idea behind drumming as well. And not only are you using both sides of the brain, you know, in terms of right and left hemisphere, uh, because of the, the, the types of rhythms that we play, um, the, 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 again, there's that dominant sort of rhythm that, that, that brings everybody into the same frequency. And that's, that's, that, that's the whole idea behind it. In a sense, if someone is depressed and they start drumming, they're changing their frequency then, right? Yeah, for sure. And that's, yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's the hope is that, is that, and it's experiential, you know, people, people are like, oh no, I don't want to drum. I just want to watch. Uh, but you're like, you know, if you just watch, then you're not, you're not, you're not going through the experience. Um, the whole idea of drum circle is it's experiential and, uh, it's inexplicable um, what it does uh, to, to, to people. I mean, there's science behind it, <laughs> but, uh, but initially, you know, people are like, well, what could drumming possibly do for me? Well, try it and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started, after reading your, about the, the drum circle, I started contemplating and I started thinking, 
life is rhythm. I mean, our heart beats, that's a rhythm. Cats purr, I mean, natural sounds and stuff that come out are usually frequencies, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, we are rhythmic beings. I mean, the yeah. first the first rhythm we heard was uh, our mother's heartbeat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of sets you on that trajectory. Um, everything about us goes in, in, in cycles, you know, waves that go up and down, there's an ebb and flow um, to our everything about us from our physical state to our etheric state. Yeah, I, I, I find that pretty interesting. And if everybody's all in synchronicity, they're all joined. And that's what humans are about is being together, you know? It, it, it certainly is, you know, uh, because I travel so much, because we travel so much, we're less susceptible to fear of the unknown or fear of the other. Um, you know, I'm more, I'm more accept, accepting of, of, of different, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I find that fascinating. Um, let's change the direction. Photography. You, when you started taking pictures, I guess, when you were young or when you were on tour, was that kind of like keeping a diary or was it just a way to fill time in between playing sets? Uh, what prompted this? Both. I mean, photography became a, such a friend uh, because, you know, I could, I could take the camera with me um, and I, I didn't have to be with anybody else. I could just, uh, I could just enjoy the moment, you know, um, manipulating light and capturing something that uh, that I thought was interesting. And then, interestingly enough, when I bring it home, uh, sometimes uh, some of those photographs will inspire, uh, say, a new art project. So it's become a really, a really fantastic way for me to document uh, life experience. Mm -hmm. I just saw a documentary with Andy Summers of Felice and he, All right. he just like about a week ago or so, and he basically did the same thing. And I started thinking, do most musicians carry cameras with them and just take pictures all the time? I wonder, do you see a lot of other musicians doing that? I do. I do. And that was, you know, we were just talking about Kevin and uh, the mirrorless camera. Yeah. And that's yeah. One, of, one of the reasons I got a, a smaller camera especially if I stick a 35 mil on it, then I can, I can basically take that camera everywhere. And the files are huge. They're like 42 megabytes big. So, you know, um, it, it's, it, it's great because I, I never know what I'm going to experience, what I'm going to see, you know? Um, so if I have that camera there, you know, I, I, can, I can, it's easy for me to document, you know, whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And you take a lot of your photographs and you kind of do mixed media. You put them into your paintings, correct? Yes, ex exactly. So there's there's a couple of ways. There's there's completely original pieces like you know all of the uh, all of the the legends pieces um, where they're one of a kind. And then I'll take high res uh, photographs of uh, the one of a kinds, and then I'll in, I'll further enhance those. Hence the term mixed media. You know, yeah. So because you use drum heads and everything. You you paint everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, you know, if 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 the dog stood stood still for long enough, I paint him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you just did the series with a lot of music legends: uh, Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, I guess Tom Petty. I guess these are people, well, people that obviously aren't with us any longer. That's let's right. say, let's say you're painting a picture of Tom Petty. Yeah. Do you listen to his music to get into the groove? How do you psychologically approach doing a painting of someone? Well, that it's interesting. I, I was, I, I met, um, I met a guy that was part of uh, sort of the, Tom Petty camp, as it were. He came to see uh, Def Leppard in Vegas and he was part of uh, our sound company. Um, and he was part of the, the whole, you know, Tom Petty camp. And um, 
after our tour finished, he invited myself and my wife to go and, and, and see them or see Tom up in Berkeley. And um, it was, you know, it, it was it was sort of a it was a great opportunity for, for myself and Lauren, particularly Lauren, because um, Tom was the first concert that she ever went to as a kid. Um, now, it just so happened that he postponed that night and he ended up playing the next night. Now, it was it was our daughter's first day of school. So we weren't able to go. Mm -hmm. um which which was really disappointing but we felt you know we needed to do the right thing and be there for 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 our daughter mm -hmm. and and then it seemed like it seemed like only weeks later uh we got the news of his passing so you know the best way for me to pay homage to anybody is is to paint them uh, and that's exactly what i did um you know i uh same thing with Neil Peart. You know, I got the news of Neil Peart's uh, passing, you know, last uh, year, right? over, well, a year, over a year ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just felt like I had to uh, paint him. And and the same same with Eddie Van Halen, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, so painting someone that you admire is is like an intimate experience for you. For sure, and yeah. you, you, do, you do start to find out more about the individual. You do listen to the music, you do read more. And by the time, by the time you, you, you're almost finished with, with the piece, you, you, you don't wanna let go of the piece, you wanna keep it, you know? Um, which has happened to me many times. Um, <laughs> but obviously, <laughs> obviously, you know, I have to, I have to let go, you know, so. So, uh, but yeah, you, you find out a lot about a person when you paint them. Especially their face. I mean, you're looking at symmetry, asymmetry, shape, everything, right? When you're, what's, is that what's going through your mind? For sure. Yeah. yeah. And if you, look, if you look at the technique, the technique is very abstract. When you look at these pieces up close, they don't make much sense. But then when you stand back, uh, your mind fills in the blanks and that that's part of the technique is there anybody that you'd like to paint that you haven't painted billy holiday um i'd love to uh paint her um elvis um um bob marley i mean there's a there's a bunch of them i mean you know it's it's you know, we we seem to lose more and more legends every you know every year. Um, I, I guess I guess that's just a fact of life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I, I got I got a, a lot of inspiration from you know from all the legends that I that I painted over the years. Um, you know, as I was growing up, and 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 they're probably the main reason why I do what I do. And, you know, I became a musician myself. Is there any particular person that you've painted that especially was poignant for you? My first one, training wheels for this, this sort of um, technique mm -hmm. was actually Steve Clark. And Steve Clark was uh, the guitar player, the, the original guitar player with uh, Death Yeah. Um, and nice story. Um, you know, I mean, I miss him every day. It's like, you just don't, you don't, you, don't, you know, you don't, you can't let go of that. It's just a, a fact. Um, but uh, when I finished the piece, I sent, I sent a photograph of it to my mother who keeps in touch with Beryl, um, Steve's mom. And uh, she obviously got really emotional when she saw it. Oh. And uh, the biggest compliment she could have paid me was the fact that she said that, you know, I captured uh, his essence. So that kind of inspired me to continue with that, that series of legends. Mm -hmm. that's, re that's really special. Um, I noticed that you do, an, well, you, you do another series called, I think it's Angels and Icons. Mm -hmm. That's another series. And I was looking at all the different paintings and I noticed a lot of it has to deal with patriotism. You have a lot of, Union Jacks and symbols of England, you know, telephone booths are kind of a symbol. 
um, but also you have American flags. Uh, what does patriotism mean to you and, and how did this end up in your paintings? That's a good question. Um, you know, I always found that um, sometimes uh, patriotism uh, came across as very militant uh, for some people. And whenever I, whenever I uh, uh, do flags, I always try to, try to soften the meaning and the idea of inclusivity um, by either painting hearts or painting peace signs over the top of the flags. Um, just, just, to, just to kind of humanize it a little bit, you know? Um, and, and, and just allow people to, uh, you know, to, to, to see, you know, the, the freedoms that we, you know, that we have uh, today and, and why. Um, and uh, it's, it's all about human beings, you know, and including people. So. I notice you put handprints in a lot of the paintings. What, what is symbolic, what does that mean to you? What is the symbolism of the hand? Um, you know, uh, I hope it inspires people because, you know, this is the only one I've got. And, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, it's, uh, it's been really good to me in terms of uh, all the things that I ever wanted to do. I was able to do all, all, all my dreams, you know. Um, you know, it's interesting. I went through the accident and it was awful, uh, but then it became a blessing uh, because it, it gave me life experience that most people have no clue. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the handprint too. Everybody has a different print, you know? Uh -huh. It's yeah. almost like your signature. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's completely unique. It's amazing yeah. that we all, we all come into this, uh, this world um, with, with, you know, something as unique as a handprint mm -hmm. and fingerprints. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the heart, um, I'm presuming some of the hearts are purple hearts, meaning, especially since it's for warriors and stuff, it's a symbol of honor. Well, honor and also life after combat. A lot of our warriors lose their identity because sometimes, you know, they may be medically discharged. And it's really difficult for them to, you know, to, to be in a situation where they're not going to go back and spend time with their comrades. They're not going to go back into, you know, the front line of a, of a, of a war zone. Um, so the idea of that is having the courage to find something else that... Uh, you can never take that ident identity away. The front line of, a, of, a, of, a, of any battle is probably one of the most exclusive places on earth. Um, but the idea that you can rediscover other things about yourself, whether that be discovering art or photography or music or poetry or dance or you name it. So that, that, that was the idea behind that was, was how, to, how, to, how to integrate, how to, how to come back. In a, in a way that was dignified, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, here in Tampa, we have MacDill Air Force Base. So we do see a lot of veterans around here and there's- VA I was just hospital. in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, so I, was just, have... I was just there like a week ago. No way. Hold yeah, I was, I, was, I was at the Godfrey Hotel playing, playing drums with a friend of mine of 30 years, actually, uh, a guy yeah. called DJ Ravi Drums. And what we do is we do this, this hybrid, it's like DJ come uh, playing live drums over the top of these really cool dance music or pop or rock mashups. And uh, yeah, I was, I was there, I was there a couple of weeks ago. Holy cow. <laughs> well, this is where I, where I am and um... In Tampa Bay, and we have this is an Air Force community, you know. So yeah, we, I used, we I used see to a live lot there. of veterans. Oh, you know this area? Oh, great. <laughs> no, I, I used to live over in Sweetwater. Oh, okay. I I had no idea anybody lived over here uh, that was uh, from Def Leppard. <laughs> there, there are um, 
a few rock people that that live around here. Stephen Stills, I think, yeah. he lives here, and um, oh, from Cheap Trick, Robin Zander. Yeah, and then you've got there. further down the coast, you've got uh, you've got there's people, I think. Yeah. Brian with ACDC. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right, and. Uh, of course, all your Southern rock people live around here, <laughs> you know, uh, remnants of Allman Brothers family, you know, the extended family, they all live around uh, here. Yeah, I, I know all the guys with the uh, Allman Betts band. I, uh, I, actually got, I actually got to see their first concert at Rock and Bowl in, uh, in Brooklyn, um, oh. way back, way, way before COVID here. But I became I became friends with uh, with all those guys uh, to to this day. I saw them about two weeks ago. Devin, in fact, we interviewed Devin Allman. For, oh, Devin's great. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Dwayne. Well, Dwayne Betts. I just I just photographed all of them uh, oh, a couple cool. of weeks ago, and he has Devin has a label, and he's been mentoring a lot of uh, young musicians, and he had a couple of. Uh, female musicians called River Kittens, and they were fantastic. And I felt really happy that he was mentoring female musicians because That's I have cool. we, we're a female owned and operated magazine, and we try to cover female acts a lot. You know, oh, that, well, you should you should you should talk to my wife. She's she's fascinating maybe I'll make an appointment with her because she's really in, I actually listened to some of her music. Her voice is beautiful. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. She was, I mean, it was very soothing to her music and, you know, just there's something about her. She's almost like ethereal or something. That's, why do you think I married her? You know, no, you guys make the perfect combination. And the fact that you're both, into giving back, paying it forward, the whole altruistic thing that goes to my heart. That's cool, um, I appreciate that. I, I was an activist for a lot of years for a lot of causes and uh, and um, so I, that's, that's a soft spot. That's one reason I wanted to ask about some of the uh, your causes, especially with the veterans. And that's we cool. see a lot of veterans here. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Um, amongst us and everything and um, I used to teach years ago and some of the students uh, had just come back from you know Iraq and they felt guilt about coming back that was the yeah. biggest problem I saw was overcoming guilt well that 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 going back to what we were saying the, the whole idea of uh, life after combat Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and survivor's guilt and everything else that goes with it. Um, you know, they spend a long time training soldiers, but they don't spend long enough uh, decompressing them. Yeah, that's true. And then I think part of the cultural thing is the old, um, I'm a man, you know, and I'm supposed to suck it up and all that and not ask for help. Yeah. I think it's kind of ingrained, especially... In military you're supposed to be tough you know what i mean we teach the exact opposite you know exactly. you have to you have to soften um and um yeah it's uh it, it's a different way forward but uh but we feel as though uh, it works mm -hmm. well i'm all for that i had um students that they they came back their marriages didn't last and they just had trouble um communicating they yeah. don't know how to communicate with other people. They, like you said, they become isolated and withdrawn. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do. And that happened to a lot of people in the last year with COVID. I know, I know. Uh, I got a taste of it myself. You know, I felt, I felt depression. Um, but then, you know, we embarked upon, you know, Big Love Benefit concerts, uh, started just being of service and just doing things for others and you know just just getting active and and and, and things lifted you know and and now and now we're starting to see you know a way forward so mm -hmm. it's good uh back to the icons um 
I noticed she had uh, a painting of uh, Victor, the dog for RCA Victor. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Which, and um, you had Buddha. Mm -hmm. My, my, my happy place. I spent, I spent many years in, uh, in, uh, in India. Um, and uh, yeah, I, 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 I had some really profound experiences. Uh, so again, you know, these are all these are all parts of my life experience. So, you know, I, I want to bring those things to other people. Looking at the collection, I, it's almost like you wear your heart on your sleeve. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. I could see your love for England, you know. With yeah. all the different symbols and stuff, but then your love for America as well. Buddha would be like your spiritual part. Mm -hmm. of you music would be RCA Victor and some symbols like that. Uh, are you still painting symbols, icons? Are you still doing that? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm doing a couple of flags. Um, I. I, I want to revisit some of the. Uh, <clears throat> some of the things I grew up with. I want to revisit the telephone boxes, do a, do a spin on that, and uh, um, mailboxes as well. They were so cool. All the Victorian, all the Victorian symbology is, is, is so cool. And it's one of the reasons why people go to England in the first place, is to experience all of that stuff. But unfortunately, they're, they're, they're tearing a lot of them down. You know, you can only see telephone boxes in certain parts of, of London. And a lot of the telephone boxes aren't even active anymore. They don't have, they don't, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody's got cell phones these days. So I, I kind of see why, but it, it seems like such a shame. Yeah, I guess, uh, well, even here, they tore down all the boxes, you know. I know. If you, if you don't, let's say you lost your cell phone, what do you do? There's no public telephones where you can throw a dime in. You have to borrow one from somebody. <laughs> I've, done that. I've done that before. And pe pe people are normally pretty gracious. You know, they'll say, yeah, no problem. You know, uh, you know, go ahead. I'd say, well, I'll use your phone if I can erase the number when I'm done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's some privacy there. <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> so I, we've touched on a lot of different topics. Is is there anything on the horizon that you would like to talk about that's that's coming up in 2021 you would like people to know about or anything you're working on? Um, I'm always working on new stuff. I've, um, I'm rehearsing with my wife at the moment. We've got a couple of, uh, couple of shows coming up. And then... And then I'm going to push forward with uh, working with DJ Ravi Drums. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, we can, we can do some festivals. That would be cool. Um, so there's, there's, always, there's always stuff to be going on with. And then, you know, just, just getting to spend this time with family has been really special. So, uh, you know, uh, there, there's, there's a silver lining, not for everybody mm -hmm. during COVID, but, but there has been for me. Um, you know, last time I took any time off was 2010. <laughs> you know, the rest of it is just full of, uh, of, of work, concerts. It's almost like we had a forced sabbatical. <laughs> I, think we, I think we needed it. I think so, too. Um, a lot of people did a lot of reflection and reached out to people they hadn't reached out. I actually talked on the phone. <laughs> I rarely talk on the phone anymore. Why don't we do that? You know what no, I mean? No, I know. No, I know. I know. It's important. It's important. Just pick up the phone and call, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I, I hope I asked some things that are slightly different, you know. No, from... it's great. It's great. I really appreciate you. Thank you. You're listening to Rock at Night. The introductory song, Get On Down, is from blues artist Billy, Billy Bass Alford. Look for his music at ReverbNation.com. <laughs>